Hello, this is Dr. Jeremiah Tampoya, and um, I wanted to create this video as a tutorial for the doctors that will be filling in in my office on the uh, Topcon Autophoropter. Um, I know some doctors may have not used this particular system, so I wanted to um, leave a little something for you guys so that you can um, use the uh, the autophoropter um, with with ease and so um, I wanted to start off and just show you the the central unit here um, the first thing that happens is that uh, the receptionist is going to work up the patient or the optician and um, they're going to get some auto refractive readings um, as well as auto lensometer readings in the pretest room which is over here You can see the pretest machines right over there. And um, once they take those measurements, they will be able to transfer that information electronically to the system. Um, if they don't, the first thing that you need to do is clear out whatever information is here just by pressing this clear button, CL. And what that'll do is you're hearing all these lens changes from the uh, the foropter unit behind me. It's just clearing everything out. And you need to clear out the information um, on every new patient, um, or I should say every time you wanna input new information. Otherwise, the foropter is not gonna go through the steps properly. Again, the, um, the, uh, the staff member working up the patient should clear out that information first before inputting the new information. Okay, so how do you input the new information? The next button that you need to be aware of is this blue button here. It's called the in button. You can see it right there. So when you press in, um, a list of AR data and prescription data or lensometry data will show up. And um, the staff member is going to staple, or I'm sorry, not staple, but paperclip the printouts that came from the, um, the pretest machines uh, to the, the intake forms. And um, I circled the, the number for each corresponding test. So this is the auto refractive data with the Ks. This is lensometry. So um, you're looking at 74 and 76. So when we go up to this machine here, the central unit, we see 74 and 76 corresponds to this particular patient. And we are going to hit OK. Once we do that, it'll auto-populate the foropter with that prescription. Now, um, what I did was I auto-populated it with the AR data. You can switch that if you wanted to through this uh, button right here where it says initial set data. If you want to do the RX to populate the foropter, then you would simply tap on RX um, <clears throat> and then OK. But here it is. So in these two big squares right there, that's the AR data. And you can also see them on the sides there where it says AR and the prescription data outside of that. OK, so when um, you start the refraction, you are going to um, start with the right eye. And in this case, as you can see, the right eye is open right here. The left eye is closed, okay? Um, it always starts on a 2040 line. So if you look up at the, um, the MNS system right here, that's the 2040 line. If the patient can't read that 2040 line, you can start with a higher letter by using the plus button here on the MNS remote. And you can see I went up to the 2050 line. 2060 line, depending on where the patient can see. But most of the time, patients can see that 2040 line. Um, so I just want to go over um, what I would do in a refraction in this case um, and um, uh, kind of review so that you have an idea of what you need to do in the process. So it's starting with the right eye, okay? The patient can read the FCBDE. Um, this set button is going to be very important because it goes through all the steps. Um, so when I press the set button, 
it'll automatically switch to the axis. Now, in this particular case, um, I need to do a, um, a screening for astigmatism first since it's only a quarter of a diopter that showed up on the AR. So I'm just actually gonna press the, the C button right here. So S is for sphere. So if I wanted to um, change the sphere, then I would press that button. If I wanted to change the cylinder, I'd press the C. If I wanted to change the axis, I'd press the A. But since first I wanna do a, um, um, a cylinder screening, I'm gonna go ahead and press the C. It'll go back up, okay? Now, um, with this particular patient, um, when you go to the C, you will see on the right side over here of the letters, you see a 0, 45, 90, and 135. That is screening for the major axes, okay? So it's at 179 now, so you know that's about 180 or zero degrees. So I'm pretty much screening at the zero degrees right now, so I'm just gonna leave it where it is. The next important thing that you wanna take note of is this circle right here. And that is basically how you determine whether or not you want to add more correction or decrease the correction for astigmatism. Now, when the patient sees, is looking through the phoropter, they're going to see two lines, two FZBDE lines. And as you can see, this is the line highlighted right here. One's gonna be on their upper left, which corresponds to the red, and they will see that red color around that line on that side. And the lower right will correspond to the green. So, so let's say the patient is looking through there with the right eye and you say, which side is more clear? The upper left with the red or the lower right with the green? And let's say they say the lower right with the green. Okay, so if they say green, that is a rejection of the correction, meaning you do not add the stigmatism correction or cylinder. So we'll move on to the next major axis. So let's go to 45. So I'll tap 45 and you can see that the whole thing rotated and it says 45 up here. So we're screening at the 45 degree axis and you say which one's clear, top the red, bottom the green. Let's say they say green again. So we'll go down to the next one. Let's do 90. Okay, so let's ask again, upper right, upper right, okay. Red or lower left, green. So we're always thinking about what the patient sees, not our view. Um, and they say they say green again, let's go to 135. Okay, now um, we'll say which side is more clear, the right side on the red, the left side on the green. Let's say they say red this time, the right side. So there's two things that I can do to add cylinder. I can press this red button, add more cylinder, okay? I'm just gonna go back by pressing the green button, or I can rotate this dial in the direction of the red. Right there, okay? All right, so let's say that they stop there and they say, okay, minus 50 is what I want. Um, well, actually, you, if you increase the sill, then you say, okay, which side is more clear again? The red side on the right, the left side on the green, and they say, okay, it's about the same. Okay, cool. So we're gonna stop there and then we're gonna go move to the axis. If you remember, the axis is where we started at, but I had to go back up to the cylinder to screen for it first. So we're gonna go to the axis, and now we're gonna say which side is more clear, the upper right or the lower left. So let's just say they, they tell you the lower left, the green side. Now, since this amount of cylinder is less than one, I change the amount of, um, degrees by 15 degrees at first, but this time I'm gonna go in the green direction. And again, I can press the button or I can turn the knob. If you look right here where it says step A5, basically that means that the axis is going to change by five degrees. So if I want 15 degrees, I'll move it three times in the green direction. Here's one, two, and three, okay? Alternatively, I could do the button and I could go one, two, three, okay? Um, if you want to do smaller increments, you can press this step A right here, 
and as you can see, it changes to one. So that means every time you turn this dial, it's gonna be one degree instead of five degrees at a time. Okay, okay. now um, after I move the axis, let's say that the patient says that the red side is clear, and so since I wanna kind of refine things and narrow things down, I go from 15 degrees to 10 degrees and move it over two steps. But first, let me make sure it's on five degrees, not one. Okay, and I say which one's clear, um, and now they say the green side, so I'll just do one step in the green side and stop right there, just to narrow it down in it some more, okay? Okay, so I'm gonna press the set button. I'm all done with the axis, okay? You will see that it moves up to the cylinder, and I say which side is more clear, the right side, the red side, the left side, the green side, and they say, eh, it's about the same. Great, so I'm gonna press the set button again, and it moves on to the sphere. When it moves on to the sphere, it'll automatically go down to the 2025 line. And you can see here, it is at the 2025 line, corresponding to the 2025 line, AP yoke F. Um, it is your decision. I guess it depends on how you like to refract. Um, I typically like to fog at this point. Um, so I will go in the plus direction. I'll turn the knob in the plus direction by plus 75. And I will say, you know, stop when you can read those letters and say that they can see those letters right there. Okay, they say APOF. Um, if I press this arrow right here, the down button, it'll go down a line. Now it's on a TZVEC, the 2020 line. Um, and if they can read that as well, that's awesome. I usually stop there. You can go to 2015 if you want. But if they can read that, then I press 20 right here, and that'll mark it as 2020. Um, if you wanted to change the line so it's not the TZVEC, simply go to your remote control for the MNS and press 20. And then you will notice once I uh, get this focused here, how it says TZVEC, if I press the 20 button, it'll change it to different letters if you think they're memorizing the letters and you want to change it up. Um, if I change the letters on the MNS, It'll always stay TZVEC on this system, so keep that in mind. Okay, so there's the right eye. We did the right eye, uh, 2020. Let's move on to the left eye. So what you're gonna do is press the set button again. Okay, and now the right eye is covered. The left eye is open, um, populates to the FZBDE line. They can read it, so I'm gonna press set. And it's gonna go down to the axis. Now, since there is already a minus 50 sill, um, I don't screen for axis, I'm sorry, I don't screen for cylinder on the major axis here. Um, so right now, what I'm gonna go do is go straight to the axis refinement. And so I ask them which side is clearer, right uh, green or left red. And then I will say, say they say left red, so I'll go press it 15 or press it three times for 15 degrees, and then they say green, then I come back 10, and then they say red, go back to the right once for five. I press set, it'll move to the cylinder, and I say which one's clear, they say red side, so I hit red, and then say uh, they say red again, for example, increases in the cylinder, and as, as you can see, when it increases the cylinder, the system will automatically bring down the sphere. Like that, so you can see there. And that's where we started, came here. Now, say you say, you ask them, okay, which side is more clear? They're, they say it's about the same. Okay, we'll stop it right there. We'll go up to the sphere. We're gonna go ahead and fog. And um, for me, you can keep it on the APEOF line. I like to change it, so I'll go to my remote here and I'll press 25 right here. And that'll change it to a different set of letters, as you can see. And then I will unfog until they can read the letters. So I'm gonna go here and turn it to the plus, I'm sorry, the minus side until they can read. And say they can read right there. And then I would go down, because I'm gonna try the 2020 line. I will change the letters as well. I'll press the 20 button, change those letters, and uh, if they can read those letters, 
great. Then I'll put that their VA is 2020. Now the left eye is done. You press that button again. You can open up and both eyes are open now. You can check their vision with both eyes, say they can see the 2020 line. So I will put 20 here. You can see the 20 populates on the screen. So there you go. Okay, so um, the next thing that's gonna happen when you press the set button is it's going to, you're gonna hear a lot of noise here. And basically what's happening is the um, Feropter changed to the near PD. So the lenses moved in a little bit. It turned on a light because you're gonna take this rod right here and I like to put it right here. And it's already set at um, 18 inches. That's where I measure for near vision. Um, you can change that if you want, but I usually do 18 inches and I tell them to read the lowest line that they can, okay? Now, once they read the lowest line that they can, you can, and it's binocular, you can go ahead and press VA and then pr pick what they, their, their vision. And uh, it was, say it was 2020. So now that it's 2020, the next thing you do is press set. And it says, do you want to quit the course? You put yes, because we're all done. Okay, and if you want to go back and turn those lights off over there on this Feropter, you press F and N. Okay, that's far and near. And it'll go back to the far prescription and the distance PD. Okay, so. That is the complete refraction. Now it's all in the system. You can actually transfer this information to Revolution, um, our software system here. So we go to the computer and here's Revolution. And I'm just gonna log in and show you how to do this. Okay. So here is Revolution. And um, let's just go to um, a, a patient. Let's see here. Let me um, let me create a patient really quick. Let me just do this really quick. Hold on. Okay, so uh, so I created Encounter uh, for Revolution and I just wanted to show you what you guys wanna do. So uh, for the purpose of this example, I'm gonna go down to Comprehensive Visual Testing, which is right here. That's where the refractive data is entered. Here's the first screen. It says initial refraction, autorefraction, keratometry, lensometry, retinoscopy. Um, the autorefraction, keratometry, and lensometry will, will be populated when we transfer that information from the Topcon autoferopter. Um, and then I'm just going to go to the secondary refraction portion. This portion I, I, I barely use, but if you have any supplemental information that you do, uh, for example, NRIPRA, cycloplegic refraction, forias, or virgences, I input that there. And if you go to the final refraction, uh, this will also be populated by the Topcon autoferopter. Basically, what information you have here in those big squares should populate into this area. So I'm gonna show you how, it, how to do it. Um, you wanna go down to this icon right here, this one right here, and click on it. And then you're gonna put in your username and password. So let me put in my username and password. Okay. Okay, so you wanna pick the patient. So the patient's going to be, I chose, it was Marilyn Valenti, that was the, the sample that I used and you wanna hit capture data. And once you hit capture data, you're gonna go back to this unit right here and you're going to hit print and hit it one time. Okay, and it takes a few seconds for everything to, to go through. And when the data comes through, 
you will see this, this window pop up. And basically, that's this is all the information from the autoferopter um, that has input that has transferred into Revolution. So you want to hit this little button here, send to Revolution EHR, okay, and then hit OK. And then I'm going to go back to the encounter. And right now you don't see anything, but if you go back a couple of um, screens, so you don't see anything here, um, it'll populate. So as you can see now, the autorefractive data is in there, the keratometry data is in there, the lensometry data is in there. Um, if I go forward a little bit real quick here, um, see this screen right here, there's no information because we didn't uh, put anything in. Actually, with this screen, um, nothing really transfers from uh, the top crown autorefractor, autoferopter, uh, I should say, uh, to the screen. But when we go to the final refraction, you will see it here, right there. Even the VAs are filled out. Same thing as here. So makes it super easy um, to do that um, and, and uh, uh, refract, okay? Uh, the next step, if I go to next, um, it'll go to the optical section and uh, you can create an RX here. If I go to create an RX, and then I usually like to specify um, what the prescription is used for. You just say it's distance. And if you wanted to populate this information with what you just transferred, there's a tiny little button up here on the upper right, and then it'll show you the refractive data to import refraction, okay? And then I'll click this right here because that's what I want, and I'll hit select. And as you can see, it'll Put, input the information from the refraction right there. Okay, so um, and then if you go down to the slider under recommendations right here, it says recommendations. Hit on that slider. You can choose what you want to prescribe the patient. This is really important because um, the optician will look at this page um, in the final prescription screen that she sees on her end to see what you, you want in. Just say that I chose high index and I wanted 1.67, um, no tint, but an AR, and say that I wanted, um, say you want, uh, say Unity Elite AR. Sorry, the, the phone is moving a lot. I'm trying to type at the same time. And then say photochromic, you know, you can put in the photochromic UV. If you know what type of photochromic you want, if you want transitions, then you can type in transitions. Okay, and then polarized, um, we're not gonna do polarized, it's single vision, lens type, single vision right there. And then if you want to authorize it, you would do update and authorize. So the prescription has to be authorized in order for the optician to actually see it on her end. Um, if you don't authorize it, then she won't be able to put in the order. So um, you know, if you do update and authorize, it'll do both. If you just do update, it'll um, input the prescription in here. So if you go to RX history, you can see there's a bunch of RX histories because I've used Marilyn as a test patient many times, but um, you can see that um, it says use for distance, but it's not authorized by me yet until I hit the, where is it? Okay, let me, let me highlight it and then it'll come up, authorized. So once I authorize and hit that, then it'll be finalized, okay? So hopefully this little tutorial um, helped you guys, will help you guys out a little bit as far as using the TopCon autoferopter and using it in conjunction with the um, um, autorefractor, um, getting the auto-case, the auto-lensometer, and uh, transferring it over to our software, Revolution. All right, thanks, bye.